Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Variety Performance is the world's longest running entertainment show and a unique British tradition stretching back more than 100 years. In 1912, my great grandfather and great grandmother, King George V and Queen Mary, attended the very first show held in aid of the Royal Variety Charity to raise funds to support entertainers and theatre workers who had fallen on hard times. Today, that mission could hardly be more relevant as this year's show will provide vital support for workers who have been affected by these extraordinarily challenging times. On behalf of the patron of the Royal Variety Performance, Her Majesty the Queen, I can only send the most special and heartfelt thanks to all of tonight's incredibly talented performers who have come together in the splendid surroundings of the Blackpool Opera House to entertain, to inspire, and above all, to help those in need. And while, very sadly, we may not uh, be able to gather as we usually would, I am delighted that, despite all adversity, the determination and dedication of everyone involved means that the show really can go on. I don't know why I'm frightened I know my way around here The cardboard trees The painted scenes The sound here Feel the early morning madness Feel the magic in the making why everything's as if we never said goodbye. I'm coming out of makeup, the lights already burning. Not long until the cameras will start turning. And the magic in the making Yes, everything's as if We never said goodbye I don't want to be alone That's all in the past This world's waited long enough Whispered conversations in overcrowded hallways. So much to say, not just today. Everything's as if we never said goodbye. Oh, please don't ever, ever make me say.
Good evening, friends, and welcome to the 108th year of the Royal Variety Performance. You know, this prestigious show has been running since 1912, and this is only the third time it's been held here in the Las Vegas of England, Blackpool! <laughs> now, obviously, we can't have a live audience here at the beautiful Winter Gardens, but through the magic of technology, for the first time ever in the history of the Royal Variety, we have a virtual audience beaming in from home. And they are beaming. Look at them lovely faces. <laughs> Hello, audience. How are you? There you are. Wow. I'd like to thank you for not coming out tonight. <laughs> it's like looking in the Dixon's window. It's so weird. <laughs> I'm so honoured and pleased that you've joined us tonight. We have got frontline staff. Give us a give us a wave, frontline staff. <laughs> We've got key workers. Give us a cheer, key workers. And then there's the rest of us, isn't it? The rest of us, the. Uh, the non-essentials. <laughs> oh, yeah. The unclapped. That's what I'm calling this. <laughs> that hurt, didn't it? Non-essential. What a way to find out what you do isn't important. <laughs> Blackpool, of course, currently in Tier 3. That's right, we're coming to you live from Tier 3. <laughs> so, who else is Tier 3? Who's away for Tier 3 is, yeah? Have you got any Tier 1s? No, there they are with the magic pasties. <laughs> Give us away Tier 2s. <laughs> There's some tier twos, look at that. Oh, oh, we dream of tier two up here. <laughs> oh, what's it like, tier two? It's like Narnia to us. <laughs> Tell us of your meetings of up to six people in public places. <laughs> <laughs> a restaurant's still a thing. How many haircuts have you had? <laughs> you know, it's, it's segregating society, that's my worry. We're going to become outcasts, us tier threes. There'll be people gossiping in tier two, giving it A, have you heard? <laughs> Barbara's got a new fella. I see, yeah, I see. Ah, yeah, he's there. Uh, he's tier three. <laughs> it's gonna be like Romeo and Juliet, two tier cross lovers. <laughs> then with tier two dads kicking off everywhere. Samantha, you are not to see that tier three boy again. <laughs> but dad, I love him. I don't care what tier he's from. You get back to your tier two bedroom. I'm not having him coming around here breathing all over our tier two things with his tier three breath. <laughs> So this year's show is slightly shorter than previous years, uh, partly because of COVID, but mostly because ITV didn't want to pay the full subscription to Zoom. <laughs> I've actually grown quite fond of these online gigs. You know, I think there's a lot of positives. Like, for one, someone heckles you, you can mute them. <laughs> you can't do that on a Friday night in Glasgow, let me tell you. <laughs> and I think the audiences are starting to enjoy them as well. They're quite cool, aren't they? Quite <laughs> enjoyable, aren't they? Good fun. I mean, think about it. You've not had to drive anywhere. You don't need a babysitter or a taxi. You've not had to remortgage your house to afford some interval wine and some revels, have you? <laughs> I mean, look at you. Some of you have made literally no effort at all. <laughs> Obviously, it's sad that the royals can't be here with us in Blackpool, but you know what? I always look at the positives. I'm slightly relieved, to be honest. I mean, it's nerve-wracking enough getting to the end of the show and having to shake their hands. Imagine having to give Her Majesty one of those elbow things. <laughs> I don't fancy that. But I'll tell you one thing that I've learnt this year. Whoever came up with the phrase, life is too short, has never been in lockdown with their own children. <laughs> yeah? I'm not about that, Just think about it. We never hung out with our parents when we were kids, did we? Never. Do you love your parents any less? No, of course you don't. We didn't do activities together. They didn't take us to play centres or trampoline parks. They never stayed up all night refreshing the Curry's website to buy us a brand new PlayStation. <laughs> These things didn't happen. First week of the six weeks holiday was like, right, off you go. <laughs> when are we allowed back in? When the street lamps come on. <laughs> in September, have a lovely holiday. <laughs> I take my kids to the park three times a week. My dad never took me to the park once in my whole childhood. If I'd have said to my dad when I was a kid, Dad, I want to go to the park, he'd have gone, off you go then. <laughs> but I'm five. <laughs> you know, oh, mind the roads. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different time, isn't it? I find the park near where I live uh, quite intimidating, to be honest. I take my children, there's always teenagers hanging around in the park, just sat there. Just drinking and smoking, just these 13, 14-year-olds just hanging around with their kids. It's, it's, it's terrifying. 
tell them. Sometimes, and this winds me up, sometimes they break the swings in the park. Living about it. Everybody loves the swings. They are the best thing in the park. We all know that. It goes swings, slide, seesaw, roundabout. That's the rules, <laughs> right? That's where they go. Then there's those things in the corner that don't even have a name. You know those ones? There's some swings, springy things. No one's ever even named them. What even are they? You've never seen a kid enjoying himself. Just a look of terror in his eyes as the world hurtles towards his face. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am to hear actual laughter and see happy faces again. I've missed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, been alive again. Now, before we get going, I have been forced to tell you that every one of tonight's acts will be following current government guidelines to keep everyone safe. Some acts will be distanced and some acts have created bubbles, especially for the show. So no need to write in, but I do look forward to muting your constructive criticism on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> now, to kick off the show in style, we have one of the UK's most successful singer-songwriters. Here at his eighth Royal Variety performance, performing incredible from his new solo album, Music Played by Humans, it's the one and only Gary Barlow. <laughs> Some might say that love is magical Some might say that you can't get enough Some might say beware, take care Cause any time again is all into thin air Some might say that love is a game And then some might say get ready for pain I say if you're feeling the same Take the biggest songs and empty it into your veins When your reputation's only fabulous When your reality is only a dream But it can be it's incredible, absolutely unforgettable People say it's only chemical, but it can't be It's incredible, what you do with me If I say it all, every word and every syllable Put you high up on the pedestal, then you'll see It's incredible, what you do to me Woo! Some might say love's unpredictable Some might say love's metaphysical you feel like you're invincible Once you get the taste then it's easy to drink it up Some might say true love is a myth Some say true love, no it doesn't exist If you say that then you haven't seen this This love I tell you no I can resist When your reputation's only fabulous That's what love is, what it's supposed to be You and me, cause it's incredible Absolutely unforgettable You look amazing. Mate, you look amazing. No, that you. was incredible, <laughs> if you will. What a great name for a song as well, because the DJ has to say it every time. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary Barlow, incredible. I love it. Very, I'm going to call Thank my you. next tour Five Stars. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, it's actually the eighth Royal Variety performance that Gary has performed at. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? 
Yeah, wonderful. You know, they get me thinking, though, Gary. You don't think that's the real reason the Royals are not here, is it? Because <laughs> it definitely is. Eight definitely. times is a lot to see one person. It is. It is. <laughs> Maybe tonight we'll get to the end and I'll shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, it's Christmas coming up, yep. and it's a special time for uh, people. Um, I've actually got you a little present. Oh. Yeah, got you a little, a little present. Yeah. Jay, uh, I, I've got something to tell you that... Uh, <laughs> well, we've been pals for a long time now, and oh, yeah. I, I, I respect you so much oh, sorry about as that. a comedian. And, and I think um, <laughs> you're hilarious. Yeah. You're just singing. Just, just read what it says, Barlow. Just read oh, yeah. the... <laughs> Singing's amazing, so I just wanted to get you something nice for Christmas. Oh, thank you very much. I've Gary's got, got me a present as got well. You a present, That's wonderful. So, uh, thank you, Gary. Here we go. I've, uh, just got, I've got a little thing. Oh, I've got a little here thing for go. him. He's got everything, hasn't he? What did you get the guy? He's got go. everything. <laughs> I mean, Big one, one, this. Wow, look at him. He's rather trained, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I'm definitely overplaying my part I'm here. <laughs> is the stage strong enough for this? <laughs> There it is. <laughs> right. I thought we said it was there a £10 go. maximum. What's I going on there? I'm more out of breath after that than after my song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got you a little present there. Let me just, oh, it is a little one. Just got a little spray of that there. Just, <laughs> can I touch it happen. now? Yeah, yeah, you can all right now, yeah. Oh, it is tiny, this. It is just a little... I'm thin. Just a little, little tiddler. Can yeah. I open it? Yeah, no, please do, please oh, open it. Sure? Yeah, no, yeah, no I'm, I just... I, I thought we were... Um, I thought we were doing the same gift for each other, if I'm honest. I didn't realise you were going to go overboard. Oh, look at that. There you wow. Go. <laughs> I didn't even know you made albums. No, no, a lot of people didn't. No, is, it, is it just the one? It's just the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually hard to come by, to be honest. I had to go to every pound land in the country. Um, <laughs> so this is for me, is it? Thank you so much. I'm actually honoured, I'm, I'm just going to give that a little spray. Well. You're going to enjoy this. <laughs> I hope you've spray. got a big boot. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> A copy of his album. <laughs> very funny, Gary Barlow. Thank you very much, my friend. Brilliant. Well, Ladies and you. gentlemen, the wonderful Thanks Mr. Gary Barlow. <laughs> Still to come tonight, Sheridan Smith, Celeste, plus an exclusive performance from Frozen the Musical. This year has been a remarkable one for our next artist who received the Rising Star Trophy at the Brits and was also named BBC Music's Sound of 2020. You'll recognise Celeste's beautiful voice from this year's Christmas John Lewis advert. Tonight, she's performing that very song. Here with the beautiful A Little Love. Please welcome the very talented Celeste. Happiness 
UK's finest stand-ups, who has appeared on the likes of Mot the Week and Have I Got News For You. Let's hear it for the fabulous Joe Caulfield. <laughs> Have a little look at you. I'm just seeing what's out there. Oh, a couple of silver foxes. <laughs> Lovely. I know some men worry about going grey, but you shouldn't. Did you know that women are attracted to men with grey hair? Isn't it? Because we look at you and we think, well, he looks sophisticated, he looks experienced, and he looks like he might die soon. <laughs> that is very attractive to a lady, isn't it? I have made an effort. I washed my hair, blow-dried my hair, and I thought, you know what? I am fed up doing my hair. Don't you ever think how lovely it must be to be a bald man? <laughs> Isn't it like the extra time in your day? You just get up in the morning, you wash your little face, you look in the mirror, spend half an hour crying, you're good to go. <laughs> But weird times, isn't it, for everybody, you know? Like, my mum's 80, so obviously I haven't seen her because, you know, well, she's 80, we've got nothing in common. <laughs> I was watching TV with my husband, Stuart. He's Scottish, my husband. And it's funny how you can be watching the same show, but you get something completely different out of it, don't you? Like, this was an episode of Law & Order, Special Victims Unit, and the first scene, a woman comes in, she's got a black eye, she tells her work colleagues she'd slipped in the shower. A couple of scenes later, she comes in, She's got bruises the other side of her face, tells her colleague she's slipped in the bath. So I went, oh, dear, I know what she's got to do. And my husband, in all seriousness, went, yeah, someone's got to tell her she's got to get one of those non-slip bath mats. <laughs> Relationships are hard, aren't they? It's hard to be locked up together sometimes, you know. A lot of people are getting divorced. I'm also getting divorced. But to be honest, I'm trying to keep it quiet because I want it to be a surprise for my husband's Christmas. <laughs> My friend Shona, she got divorced a couple of years ago, and now she's in a new relationship, right? It's what I call an Ikea relationship. Looks lovely now, six months' time, it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> now, my advice to you is, if you've been with your partner a long time like I have, do not go out on a double date with your friend and her new partner. We do not look good in comparison to new couples. <laughs> It was a nightmare. It's me and Stuart, Shona, this bloke Gordon she's seeing. First off, I don't recognise Shona because she's in her date personality. <laughs> I'm like, oh, who's this lovely, agreeable woman? I've never met her before. <laughs> Honest to God, everything he says, she agrees with. She's like, I'm so glad you said red wine. I was just about to say, I want to get red wine, and now you said red wine. Oh, that's amazing. We both like red wine. It's incredible. <gasps> Do you like olives? I like olives too. <gasps> Guess what? I use a knife and fork too. <laughs> oh, and they're being all romantic with each other. She's there going, oh, we've got a film, Gordon. Isn't our film Sleepless in Seattle? That's our film, Joe. We absolutely love that film, don't we, Gordon? That's our film. Do you have a film? I'm going to Stuart quick. Do we have a film? <laughs> He's no help. My husband goes, oh, we've got a film. Have you seen The Shining? <laughs> Do you know the creepiest thing she said to me, I thought? She goes, sometimes, when he's sleeping, I'll sit up and I'll just watch him while he's sleeping. <laughs> I think that's creepy. And also, isn't that scary for men? Like, if you're asleep and then you wake up in the night and you find her just looking at you... <laughs> Be honest, right? How many people out there are more like me? How many people out there have ever gone to bed so angry at your partner that you pretend to have a nightmare just so that you can roll over and smack them in the head. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, I had a terrible dream. That was just, oh, did I bruise you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it is nice, though, isn't it? When you find that person, isn't it? And you go, that's the person for me. That's my soul, mate. We're going to grow old together. And that's lovely, isn't it? Slowly watching each other decay. What a joy that is. <laughs> Because it's the things are sort of the same but different, aren't they? Like you used to watch each other getting undressed in the bedroom and it would be exciting. And now you watch each other getting undressed in the bedroom, but it's a bit more like, oh, hang on, that's moved and changed colour. <laughs> you want to get that checked? Uh, but I've got a little tip for you. Like if things are getting too much, like if your partner's annoying you at home, do what I do. I send him out shopping, but I put some things on the shopping list that don't actually exist just to keep him out of the house a bit longer. I'll give you one for nothing. 
Sweet and sour shoe polish. Two hours he was gone. Two hours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. After breaking Broadway box office records, Disney's Frozen is coming to London's West End, opening the newly restored Theatre Royal Drury Lane next spring. If you're like me, you'll know every single note, word and breath of this song, forwards and backwards, treating us to an exclusive preview as Elsa. Please welcome leading lady Samantha Barks performing the ultimate showstopper, Let It Go! from Stephen Mulhern and music from the fabulous Melanie Sim. Now you'll know our next 
performer as a much-loved presenter on shows such as Saturday Night Takeaway, In For A Penny and Catchphrase. But did you know he is also a brilliant magician? Me neither. He kept that up his sleeve. <laughs> I've got better jokes than that, I promise. It says here, Stephen started his career turning tricks at Butlins. <laughs> Not sure that's quite right, but anyway, here to perform a special trick for us tonight at the Royal Variety. Please welcome the unbelievable Stephen Mohan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is lovely to be here tonight, but let's face it, it's lovely to be anywhere at the moment. <laughs> yes. Now you may know me as a TV presenter or a model. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> but when I'm on stage, I am a magician, and that's exactly what I'm going to do for you tonight. I have a prediction over here. Here it is. This is my stage hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to place that just here. From now on, I will not move at that prediction, OK? Because what we're going to try is something completely different tonight. OK, we're going to try something uh, with you at home. Everybody that's watching right now, we're going to try like a socially distant trick. And here is how it's going to work. I've got a pack of cards here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to flick through these cards and I want you to see one in the pack and just think of it, OK? So make sure you see one in the pack. Right. First of all, make your mind go blank. That was quick. <laughs> Good. So remember, I'll riffle through. See, look at the focus. Look at the concentration. Here we go. Take a look now. See a card and think of it. Right, you should have a card in your mind. Don't change your mind. Don't tell anybody else what card you are thinking of. Now, remember the prediction. I see you all nodding. This is good. <laughs> I've got a prediction here that I placed in my pocket at the start. Now, I did make you uh, all your minds go blank. That was the first trick, and that's why I've got this blank playing card. But then I said, think of a card in the deck, and you did. And I think the one that you're thinking of is the... Eight of Hearts. Oh, yes! Yeah. No! People are going to be treated in their millions! Right. Unbelievable. But not as unbelievable as this. To help me out with my next trick, please welcome the beautiful Fatosa! Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. How are you feeling? Um, a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. What's this? Don't you worry about that, Faye. Don't you worry about it. You're going to love it. In fact, get yourself over here. That's it. Um, Let's pop you in the box. Are you sure this is going to be OK? I've got no idea because I've never done it before. Oh. Right. <laughs> Let's get started. It's time to begin. Let's count it in. Five, six, seven, <laughs> enough of that. Is this trick safe? Is this safe? Is this safe? It... Is it safe? But I'll tell you what, Faye, this trick will kill you. Tragedy. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just love all your songs, but you know that. Do you know what? Let me measure you up first of all. Let me just pull this down just here like that. Very good indeed. Let's just lock that into place. Perfect. This is all looking good. Actually, put your feet out for me. Yeah, and the other one. Very good indeed. Great. You are taller than I thought, Faye. Have you ever thought about being a tiny bit smaller? Have you ever thought about that? Well, I suppose it would be useful for talking to Anton Deck, I suppose. Very true, very true. Well, I tell you what, your wish is my command. They're going to love that. Right, here we go. You are not going to believe this. Watch. It's a bit strange. I'm sure it does. But wait there, Faye, because it gets even better. Watch this. This truly is gonna blow your mind. Here we go. Oh, Faye! Unbelievable! Seriously! Do you know what? We did a survey to find out who is the nation's favourite member of Steps, and you are just ahead. <laughs> now, let's show you around the back. <laughs> you can see that. My feet look big from this angle. I'm sure they do. Nothing above, and more importantly, nothing below. Oh, oh come on! <laughs> yes! Right. We need to put you back together, Faye. Let's get you back down to Earth. That's it. There we go. Lovely stuff. 
And now the final bit, and then you'll be back to normal. Here we go, Faye. Let's get you back up there. Ready? One person going up. Are you ready? Ooh. Oh, that feels better. Yes. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Yes. Ooh. Oh, one final step. There you go, Faye. <laughs> Touchwood, you're all back to normal, and the audience will give you a huge round of applause for the beautiful Faye Toza! will mark 25 years since our next artist first found fame as part of one of the world's biggest girl bands. And just like me at school, she got given the name Sporty. Unlike her, though, mine was ironic. <laughs> After the Spice Girls, she went on to huge international success as an artist in her own right, recently releasing her eighth solo album. Performing her hit single, Blame It On Me, please welcome the sensational Melanie C! your friend so why don't you just blame it on me why don't you just This year's Britain's Got Talent winner, John Courtney.
great, great Cilla Black was a British icon. And it's only fitting that her story has become the subject of a major theatrical production. Next year, Cilla the Musical will open in Liverpool and tour across the UK before beginning an eagerly anticipated run in the West End. With Andrew Lansall playing the legendary manager Brian Epstein and reprising her role from ITV's award-winning biopic Cilla, please welcome Sheridan Smith. Brian, <laughs> oh my neck, I've never seen such a big orchestra in all my life. It can't be for me. Of course it is. It's a beautiful song and we need to perform it properly. <sighs> What's the matter? Oh, Brian, look, I'm not classy enough for a song like this. It's a ballad, you know, I'm a rock and roll sort of girl. Scylla, I want you to trust me. But look, my first record didn't sell, and if my second record flops, that's me finished. I had a terrific struggle to persuade George Martin to let you record this song. He wanted it for Shirley Bassey. Oh, well, she'd have been good. But I said no. I'm sure it's right for my darling girl. Oh, I don't know. I mean, look at me dressed up like a dog's dinner. I mean, it's a beautiful dress, don't get me wrong, and I Scylla, appreciate... Scylla, you are going to be a star. <sighs> and I want you to feel like one when you record this song. Please. Don't lose faith in yourself. I haven't. Not for one moment. You can do this. Okay. Anyone who ever loved could look at me and know that I love you. Anyone who ever dreamed could look at me and know I dream of you, knowing I love you. So, anyone who had a heart would take me in his arms and love me too. You couldn't really have a heart that hurt me like you hurt me and be so what am I to do Every time you go away I always say This time it's goodbye, dear Loving you the way I do I take you back Without you I die
your head resting in mine. I feel a power so divine. You're my world, you are my night and day. You're my world, you're every breath I pray. There's going to be no royalty here. <laughs> we stop it. Yeah. It's a jam. We actually worked together. One of my very first jobs was with you. It was. I, this would have, I don't want to put a year on it, but it was a while ago. A long time ago. A good sort of over 15 years. I was actually the warm up guy for two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. He was. I and look, now look at look you. Look at us here. Look at you. Thank you. Us ruffians. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a lot of us obviously had a very different year, uh, but yours couldn't be any more different to your usual years. You had a baby. I did have a baby. Ah, I love that. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Best thing to happen to me. Thank you. So tell us, what you had a little boy? A little boy called Billy. He's six months. Little Billy. Oh, he's the best thing. That's I mean... a great age. That's where, that's where you leave them in one place and they're still there when you get back. <laughs> very true, it is. <laughs> You're a daddy, aren't you? I am. I've got six children, to be fair, so... How'd you do that? Uh, well, I can't say it's a family show, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute joy every single day. I do love it. I've actually got a little tip for you at this time of year. Please. Actually, this is for all parents. Uh, this time of year, you know, it's, it's hard sort of discipline with your children and leading up to Christmas. You don't want to spoil it. This is a great way of keeping them in line as the holidays approach. OK, so you've got a burglar alarm in your house. Uh, there's a little sensor in your living room a lot of you'll have, and it turns a different colour when somebody moves, like a motion sensor. Mine goes red. What you do is you tell them when it goes red, that's Father Christmas. Check it in to make sure they're being well behaved. <laughs> Honestly, it works an absolute treat. You can have that for free. It doesn't work forever, I will tell you. I remember one year coming in and my daughter was stood there with the Argos catalogue. Come on, put it in there. Well, I really hope you enjoy your, your first Christmas with Billy. Thank you. And you and everyone at home, have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for what having an me. Thank treat. you. Sheridan Smith, Thanks, everybody. <laughs> performer became the first ever Golden Buzzer Act to win Britain's Got Talent after gaining more than 35% of the votes. It's a good job he didn't go on America's Got Talent or they'd still be debating the result. <laughs> Here with a special performance, please put your hands together for this year's brilliant BGT winner, John Courtney! <laughs> And it is a huge honour to be here, part of this iconic show. Here's the thing. Uh, for Christmas, every year for the last 13 years, I've written a song for my wife, Emma, and I've made a little music video to go with it, and I've given it to her as a Christmas gift on Christmas Eve. The last few months have been a bit of a whirlwind, and uh, I had to tell Emma that I didn't have time to write her a song this year, and she understood. What she didn't understand is that I was lying. I did write her a song, but this year she gets it early, and she gets to hear it performed for the first time on the Royal Variety Show. This is Cosmos at Christmas. We're like Laurel and Hardy, Barker and Corbett, Eric and Ernie, Bernie and Schnorbitz, 
Cannon and ball, bombastic and shaggy. I'll be your Kermit if you'll be Miss Piggy. If I'm a Danny from Greece, I may not be as cool, but you weren't as innocent as Sandy at school. Like oceans and cruise ships, canals and barges, you're my budget airline, I'm your hidden charges. We'll have cosmos at Christmas, espresso martinis, surviving the morning on Prosecco Bellinis. We'll toast our loved ones and we'll look around us at the smiles on our boys and the joys that are Christmas. We go together like Del Boy and Rodney, like Stephen Fry and Clever, like bunnies at Easter, like chocolate whenever. I love you as much as you love your TV, celebrities in jungles, husbands on BGT. More than Boris loves power, or a psycho loves a shower. More than honeybees love flowers, or Blackpool loves towers. More than Sinatra and swing, tantric and sting, crown jewels and bling. So I'm gonna sing, we'll have cosmos at Christmas. And gingerbread coffees, you'll leave quality street rappers in the tin with the toffees. We'll toast our loved ones and we'll look around us at the smiles on our boys and the joys that are Christmas. And even though everything one day comes to an end, like the last page of a good book or the last series of friends, so our kids will grow older and leave their father and mother. But we'll survive that chapter too Cause we'll have each other And we'll have cosmos at Christmas And Boxing Day headaches Chocolates and mince pies And rich booze-filled fruitcakes We'll toast our loved ones And we'll look around us At the joy and the love That's not just for Christmas There's more to think of it's not all about us. Ladies and gentlemen, from my old school, please welcome the Royal Hospital School Drum Display Team. Plenty more to come, including phenomenal performances from Black Blues Brothers, Marisha Wallace and Michael Ball. Our next act has amazed and astonished audiences around the world with their distinctive feel-good shows. This Kenyan acrobatic troupe owe their global success to Sarakasi, the trust which promotes performing arts for young people from disadvantaged backgrounds in East Africa. They have now performed in 250 cities for more than 300,000 people, including Pope Francis. We're delighted they're able to join us here at the Royal Variety Performance. So please give a huge round of applause for the brilliant Black Blues Brothers! <laughs>
to pause and remember some of the much-loved stars from the world of comedy, music and entertainment who sadly left us this past year.
Gary Seacombe's motor car starting up on a cold morning. <laughs> James Stewart. <laughs> Fozzie Bear. <laughs> Edward Heath. <laughs> I don't think this is a good idea. They've just had new carpets put down at Windsor Castle. I don't think... <laughs> I mean, you see... You see the Queen Troop in the colour on this, do you, or something like that? It'd be like New Britain. It'd be like New Brighton is what it'd be like. As one of Broadway and the West End's best-known voices, our next performer made headlines after putting together a record to raise funds for those in the theatre industry affected by the crippling lockdown. Her beautiful rendition of Tomorrow from the musical Annie made it to the top of the download charts and led her to recording a new album full of similarly inspiring songs. Let's welcome the sensational Marisha Wallace. with me. 
is from Steps, plus Michael Ball and Captain Sir Tom Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat you're in for now. With three platinum albums and 14 top ten singles under their belt, Steps can only be described as a British institution. Their unique, infectious and high-energy performances are, quite frankly, a welcome antidote to 2020. I, for one, am glad they're here, to be honest. I was worried about the band all over the summer. Every time there was a government briefing, Professor Chris Whitty kept saying that if the R number doesn't go down, steps will be taken. <laughs> I thought, what have they done to deserve that? They've done nothing wrong. That would be a tragedy. Tonight, they're back on the Royal Variety stage after 21 years to perform Something In Your Eyes from their latest album entitled What The Future Holds. So, get up on your feet, get dancing. It's the eternally spectacular stage! You are the only one. 
as we heard earlier tonight from His Royal Highness, the Royal Variety performance has a strong history of raising much-needed funds for the Royal Variety charity, and in this difficult year, their help is needed more than ever. It's quite ironic that many entertainers and those working behind the scenes in entertainment spend much of their working lives raising funds for other people's charities, but often giving little thought to their own future security or situation. It's almost impossible to imagine a world without entertainment or entertainers. And for more than a century, the Royal Variety Performance has raised funds for workers from this industry who've fallen on tough times. Supported by members of the Royal Family, from King George V and Queen Mary, right up to today. Along with Brinsworth House, the charity's residential care home. The Royal Variety Charity also offers help, support and grants to many entertainment workers. And this year, help has been needed like never before. When the country went into lockdown in March 2020, the whole entertainment industry was shut down. All performances and live events were cancelled and all theatres and venues closed. Hard-working entertainers were faced with no jobs, no prospect of work and little or no official help. People like stand-up comedian Paulie. When everything stops financially, that's it. And if we don't work in the entertainment business, we don't eat and we don't pay our bills. I received a small grant from the Royal Variety Charity and that small grant makes such a difference. And it also gives you the hope to carry on. And I will carry on. I will carry on, because I'm not hanging up my sparkly frock and my microphone. I refuse to do that. And it's not just the pandemic that can cause hardship. Gordon and his wife ran a theatre company together until Joy fell ill. Joy um, became disabled and her care needs increased. It was a very difficult time and, and during over maybe a period of five years, we went through all of our savings. And so literally when she died, I was virtually broke. I contacted the Royal Variety Charity and not only did they give me a grant to pay for Joy's funeral, they gave me shopping vouchers. They arranged for me to have a fantastic career counseling course and they would give me practical help and sympathy and care. For the majority of workers in this industry, there is no financial security. Actress Phoebe had just left home and landed her first role at the National Theatre when she was diagnosed with a serious illness. It felt like my career was only just starting, which it was. To have that ripped away because of my illness, that would have just been too much to handle. The Royal Variety got in touch with me and they gave me a grant which enabled me to stay in London and do what I love, which is acting. With your help, the Royal Variety Charity can offer support for a whole generation of entertainment workers. So they'll be there ready to bring joy and laughter when this pandemic is all over. To find out more and to donate, visit royalvarietycharity.org. Our next performer made his name in comedy clubs and festivals across the world. After two sell-out UK tours and countless TV appearances, he's about to make his Royal Variety performance debut. Please welcome Deliso Shaponda! <laughs> Malawi in Central Africa. It is one of the British Commonwealth, uh, minus the wealth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny when you're African, people make a lot of strange assumptions. And it's not even from malice. I had a woman who was clearly a fan approach me after a show. She was a posh, posh lady in Oxford. And she was like, oh, 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 you're so funny. You're so funny. It, it, it's so inspiring. Inspiring. I love you so much. It's so inspiring. You've come so far. It's so inspiring how you came from nothing. 
And I was like, what is this woman on about? And the more she spoke, I realized what had happened. She grabbed hold of the fact that I'm from Africa and just started telling herself stories, imagining I grew up in some refugee camp or something like that. This woman had watched way too many charity ads. <laughs> she kept saying, how do you speak such good English? You've come so far. And yes, Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world, but I wasn't. We had a goal vote. <laughs> and I actually felt bad letting her know that I grew up privileged because she had been so excited. She thought she was talking to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> I had to let her know she was actually talking to Carlton. <laughs> Cause I am not that African. I don't have that Oliver Twist background. I never grew up in a village and changed my life. I never needed to because that was my mom. My mom grew up in a village, got a scholarship, became a doctor, right? I never had to do that because that was my dad. He grew up in a village, got a scholarship, became a lawyer. It's amazing. I'm so proud of them, but it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I do speak good English because I went to posh British schools in Africa, like Hogwarts, Africa. <laughs> but when I look back at it, the curriculum didn't make sense. My primary school was in Kenya, very posh school, but I was in Kenya. Surrounded by Kenyans. There is a Kenyan language, Swahili, Hakuna Matata. Disney did not make that up. <laughs> it never came up once in my schools. They taught me English, French, Latin. <laughs> Latin is a dead language. I'm a bow, I'm a bus, I'm a bat. It's a waste of time. My crazy school thought there's more chance I'm gonna run into the ghost of Julius Caesar <laughs> than another living, breathing African. <laughs> And history class. I was in Africa, on African soil. You'd think maybe I'd learn about Nelson Mandela, learn about the Mau Mau rebels. No, Henry VIII, <laughs> William the Conqueror. I just accepted it because I was a kid. But as I grew older, I realized in loads of subtle ways, my school was telling me that my culture was horrible and yours was awesome. And then I moved to the UK and I heard people say, why do all these immigrants come here? You prepared me perfectly. <laughs> but I will say this, even though there's some people who aren't welcoming, I find that that's a minority. Most of you could not care less. In fact, I'll go one step further and say most of you hate each other more than foreigners. <laughs> Streets of Newcastle, someone said to me, you're black, at least you're not from Sunderland. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have a big imagination. And having a big imagination is great for being a comedian, not so good for dating. So when you meet somebody on a Monday and you ask them out, you don't go out on a Tuesday. You go out maybe on the Friday. Between Monday and Friday, my imagination goes crazy. I start imagining all sorts of things. I start imagining, imagine it works out. Imagine I introduce her to my parents. Imagine we get married. The pressure is on. If on Friday she's like, I, I don't think we should do this again, I'm like, but hey, what about the kids? <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a delight entertaining you. Thank you so much. Still to come, Michael Ball and Captain Sir Tom Moore, plus a sensational Royal Variety finale. Now for a very special moment. At the height of this year's pandemic, one man set out on a mission to walk the length of his garden 100 times before his 100th birthday. His remarkable efforts won over the nation's hearts and raised over £38 million for the NHS charities in the process. He soon joined forces with one of the country's best-loved entertainers to record a song with an overriding message of hope. Their resulting single topped the charts and became a lockdown anthem. Celebrating Captain Sir Tom Moore with a very special performance, please welcome the incomparable Michael Ball! <laughs> a store Hold your head up high 
And don't be afraid of the dark Of the end of the storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver song Of the lark Walk on to the wind Walk on to the rain Though your dreams be touched and blown Walk on, walk on With hope in your heart And you'll And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of the storm There's a golden sky And sweet to the song of the lark Walk on to the wind Walk on through the rain, rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown Absolutely knockout. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Means what a lot a, to me. What a performance. What a performance. Now, even though Captain Tom couldn't be here on stage tonight, we can go live to him at home. Very exciting. Good evening, Captain Tom. <laughs> All dressed up. Lovely. Looking great. When you first went out to uh, to start your walking in the in the garden before you turned a hundred. I mean, what was the... Did you have a number in your head? Was there a, was there a number that you wanted to raise, the amount of money? Uh, uh, well, at the time, we really wanted to raise a small amount of money just for the National Health Service. But as you know, this grew and grew and grew. And with the assistance of people throughout the world, we managed to raise this vast sum of money which went to the, the National Health Service and I'm sure did quite a lot of good 
uh, to all the members of the staff, the doctors and the nurses who were giving themselves in danger at such an important time. Well done, National Health. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, is there anything you would like to say to Captain Tom? I would. Um, I came across Captain Tom at a time when I needed him. I needed an inspiration. I needed a light at the end of the tunnel. And I saw Tom, and I've been privileged to get to know him, as we all have. And he has provided that. He has shown us the strength, the dignity, the determination, the spirit that makes this country so special. He epitomizes it. And Sir Tom, I salute you, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Lovely. Well, to thank you both, not just for raising all that money, but for raising the nation's spirit when we needed it the most. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Michael Ball and the incredible Captain Sir Tom Moore! <laughs> wow. Now, we're almost at the end of the show, and what a memorable night it has been. Let's hear it for all of our performers who have given their time for free for this very special charity. Dave Arch and our Royal Variety Orchestra, our special audience and everyone here in Blackpool for taking such good care of us. But before we go, it's time for the traditional Royal Variety finale. So let me welcome back the cast of tonight's show to join in with a song that, in these uncertain times, might just have a special meaning to us all. Times in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on For it won't be long Till I'm gonna need Somebody to lean on Please swallow your pride If I have things You need to borrow For
gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this very unique Royal Variety performance. Good night, Merry Christmas. Take care. Thank you.